Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the Lagarde 3330ADJ. This is a safe lock mechanical dial. Um, and this video is to give an overview, a visual overview of the unit. We'll give a cursory overview to the installation instructions. I am not while being a certified registered locksmith, my concentration is not with safes and vaults. Although, of course, I understand the operating principle of these locks enough to be able to give you certainly a visual review um, of the unit. I can't change the combination because I don't have a change key. Uh, a change key, which we'll get to in the installation instructions, permits you to be able to rotate without engaging the locking plates. I forget the technical term. So here, let's do a visual review. Okay, Here's our dial. Our die cast zinc dial would be my guess. That'll make it heavy. Uh, this is not light. This uh, lock weighs, well we'll weigh it. Okay. Of course your lock body Combination lock group two. Your mounting plate for your, obviously your, your combination stop and then your change stop is on there. Plastic bushing, that's obviously going to be for your equipment to go through on the dial. Bolts. Oh, the change key. Okay, I'm still not going to change the combination. <laughs> not going to change the combination. Um, I don't have the amount of time it takes today in case I have to redo it. Um, but let's go through it. Okay, so some basic dimensional uh, properties with this. The length of the body, about 3 and 5 sixteenths, about the overall height, about 2 and 3 eighths. You can see those four mounting points for your bolt. Uh, let's take a center on those points just to be, just to record that data. Looks like it's about two and three quarter or so, maybe two and eleven sixteenths. And then vertically, let's just hold it this way. Looks like it's about one and eleven sixteenths. Okay, thickness of the body about an inch and an eighth. Diameter of the dial mounting plate, about three and three quarter. Okay. Then your combination. Okay. Yeah, that's your change key. Uh, let's switch this. Uh, video to the screen view so we can take a look at the installation instructions which are primarily primarily how to go about changing the combination. Okay so the installation instructions are linked to down below and the factory default combination is 50-50-50. Um, well it's just 50. Um, turn the dial to the left counterclockwise passing 53 times and stop exactly on the number 50 the fourth time. Turn to the right and you will of course, or clockwise, clockwise, and then you'll retract the bolt at that point. Opening index is that top line. The changing index would be to the right. Um, that is, <clears throat> the changing index is moved away those eight points, eight positions, because you need to have some room when you are changing the combination to get the area of the locking disc moved so that when you turn it back the other way it will then lock in. That's a very poor description of how this works. Um, anyway, let's start with you've got your combination. You'll know how to open it once it's installed. Variations in the alignment of the dial ring during installation could cause you to be 
off by one or two numbers, so be mindful of that. When dialing a combination, if you pass the number on which you intended to stop, you have to start all over again, whether, you know, any dial combination. To set the combination, you need to know the existing combination and have the change key, which again is included. Um, there is what is called in the industry a forbidden zone, and that is when selecting a combination, choose a three number sequence between 0 and 99. Never select numbers 0 to 20 as the last number of the com com uh, combination. This is the forbidden zone and can cause the lock to malfunction. For security purposes, do not select a combination from personal data, such as the things that people could easily guess. Now, what's interesting about these types of locks is there are four, there are three uh, plates in this lock. Each plate will offer you 0 to 99 in terms of options. So that's a hundred. There are a hundred tick marks on the on the dial. Okay. So what's interesting is the amount of theoretical combinations is really cool on locks like this. And what I mean is there are a million theoretical combinations on this lock. Those are theoretical. Now how do I derive at that? Well there are a hundred marks on the dial. So what, and you've got three plates, so 100 to the third power is 1 million. That's the theoretical. Let's say, in reality, that what you're really doing is to achieve your possible combination total, you're really going to be working with this type of number. 100, that would be theoretical. Well, but you know that you've got the forbidden zone that you can't get into, so there are only 80 possibilities there. So your total combinations are 100 to the second power times 80. So 100 to the second power, 100 times 100 times 80. You're going to be able to come up with um, 800,000 combinations, theoretical. Um, I don't. I can't speak expertly enough to know how much of that variation you would lose. You know, if you were to take, you know, 98% of that number, if that math works, you know, you're still going to have 784,000 possible combinations. And that's what really make, you know, uh, that's what really make these great. They're they're just saying don't make it something that people can easily guess uh, on you. Okay. <laughs> Um, now, dial the existing combination using the changing index because you're going to change it. You're going to use this tick mark here when you're dialing four times counterclockwise, then right to 50. You're going to be using this mark. Stop the dial on the third number of the combination. Insert the change key. So what, you've, what you have now is... Okay, what you have Bear with me. On the face of the padlock, that would be the inside. So you can change the combination without, of course, removing the lock. And there is an access hole. Uh, on the face of the lock that you can see the head of the two silver screws that hold the body together. You do not need, of course, to uh, disassemble this at all. Okay, You'll insert your change key into the hole. Once you have your combination set, you've set it using the changing index. Turn the change key to the right clockwise one quarter turn until the key stops and leave the change key in the lock while setting the new combination. What happens is the change key spreads the opening or, or disengages 
the locking uh, wheels uh, from the rotation necessary uh, so that you can reset the combination. One quarter turn right till, till it stops, leave it in there. Next turn the dial to the left, at least four complete rotations to clear the lock. Now you're ready to set the new combination. Do not spin the dial to clear the lock. Um, I would suggest that you write down your combination. Okay. Turn the dial left counterclockwise, passing the first number on the combination, which is 10 in this example, three times. Then stop exactly on the number 10. Then turn to the right. Uh, turn the dial clockwise, passing the next number in the combination twice, then stop exactly on the number 20 the third time, and then go counterclockwise, pass your 30 one time, then stop exactly on the second time when you land on it the second time. The reason you have to um, rotate it in this fashion is because these plates that are inside there are three of them in this lock and if my memory serves me you know you've got your post driving through here well on these wheels there are little stops that are attached to them they for all intents and purposes they kind of look like that and as you're turning your dial you have to rotate the wheel far enough three times in fact before you can start to affect the position of the other wheels so you are, as you're setting one wheel, and I forgive me, but I forget if the outer or the inner, the closest or the furthest from the door moves first, but you have to rotate it so many times because you need to then set your next wheel in perfect, proper alignment as you rotate in the opposite direction, okay? Uh, that's a very poor example of why you rotate it four, then three, then two. Um, there, is a, there is a great... It, there is a beyond great source an author Let's see if I can find them is Mark Weber Tobias and he has, and I've written, and I've read both volumes, uh, almost all of it, Locks, Safes, and Security. It is the premier document, I think, at least it, it would be for me, for a forensic review of how many locks work, uh, not, only, um, not only padlocks, but he touches on everything, um, a, a irreplaceable Comprehend. It's, it's a encyclopedia and in its own. There are two volumes to this. So if you if you wanted to, everything that I know came out of this book. I just it's been a year since I read it, so I've forgotten some of the tech, some of the actual terms. Okay, so now open the lock with the new combination. Same methodology to the left. Three times stop on the fourth, etc. And at that point, you're done. Um, just go through the steps of setting it carefully and follow the instructions, and I would probably read them a couple of times if you've never done it. But to a locksmith, this is easy, and there would be no need to really read the installation instructions if you work on safes and vaults often enough. Um, and, you know, if what you need to do is... You've set your combination. Hold the dial to prevent movement. Turn the change key to the left counterclockwise one quarter turn, then remove, pardon me, the dial you turn, then remove the change key. Obviously, always perform this test with it open, the door open. Don't close the door. I have been in locksmithing classes and people who work on safes and vaults, they force the owner to demonstrate not less than three times that they know the new combination and how to work it. 
Um, then open with the new com with the with the uh, modified combination. So obviously, whoever is going to be getting these locks on this order, and there are two of them, they are going to a locksmith supply house. Uh, they will certainly be changing the combination when they get this material uh, in their hands and then installed. Obviously, and you'll want to, of course, do this while you're installed on the door, because otherwise. Um, you won't really have a solid way of being able to change any of this or test any of it, really. Okay. Let's finish up this video on camera. And I hope that you'll forgive my flaky memory on the names of the particular parts, but safes and vaults will not be an area of concentration that I... Uh, expect to move into at any point. This video is really to serve as visual and dimensional evidence of the item. This is where your change key goes, okay? And that can really only go in one way. It's going to be the small end will go in to the unit. It has a flattened end there, and that will match the profile that you see here as well, okay? No reason to take this off. If you're curious, you can definitely take it off and, and look and see how this works. Um, I don't believe there would be any trouble with that, but, you know, if you really want to know how they work, the way that I was first introduced to safe combination uh, dials and whatnot, the cover was off. And we were doing, you know, so you can really see the wheels, how they turn. And when you turn the change key, you can see what change that makes on the inside of the lock, allowing things to move without being directly engaged. And also the uh, stops that are on the combination wheels or the wheel pack. Well, you got to turn it four times in order to get the one wheel moved far enough so that it can then make the second wheel move to the point where it can make the third wheel move. Okay, and that's why you have to do that. And when you go back the opposite direction one less time, that means you're not going to change. I believe what you're doing is the, the wheel closest to the door itself is what's being changed um, last. Uh, so what when you're setting the combination... The first number that you set, it's actually the last wheel that gets moved, I think is how that works. Or the last wheel that begins rev revolving uh, in the entire process of turning it so many times. Okay, anyway, um, I will be happy to entertain any sort of a deep dive question on this material uh, should one come up um, for you. Uh, I don't have... I, probably won't have one of these units around available um, to work with, but I can tell you having wor having successfully changed combinations in the past, um, it's it's elementary, but like everything in locksmithing, um, it you really do benefit from, yeah, the screws come off, look at the cover, understand how it all works, and I would, and that Mark Weber Tobias reference is and uh, an investment that's an expensive set of books when you when you read um, when you get into those books and you realize the depth at which he's able to go no other author uh, has ever presented a work that I've ever seen to that level in such an overall sense he has an entire chapter on the science and uh, of drilling safe doors the metallurgy the rotation speeds, formulas by which to derive all of this material. What are you drilling into? What are you drilling into it with? How quickly are you doing it? What's your what's your RPM? What is your rate of travel? And in order, uh, that book was very helpful um, in studying for the CRL mandatory exam because I was able to learn many things about other locks that I don't bump into but I very much benefited by a lot of the forensic information that was in there regarding the appreciation. If you're going to drill a safe, if you're going to recover a combination for a client and you need to drill a hole in a door, um, understanding the science behind how that happens and how to best suit your, or position yourself for success, I can't see that document being anything other than irreplaceable. Finally, there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Lagarde products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Any questions on the Lagarde 3330 ADJ uh, mechanical dial lock or any other Lagarde product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.